More than two million people are without power right now, and three have died after Hurricane Barrel makes landfall along the Texas coastline. It's now been downgraded to a tropical storm, but its impacts are being felt far and wide. We do have crews all along the Texas coast from Corpus Christi to Beaumont as we bring you team coverage on where Tropical Storm Barrel is headed next and how the damage left behind is shaping up. Thank you for joining us for News 4 San Antonio at noon. I'm Diana Rocco. And I'm Robert Price in for David Chancellor. Again, already three people have been killed by Hurricane Barrel, now downgraded to a tropical storm. In Bolivar, a woman in her 70s lost power to her oxygen tank and sadly passed away. In Harris County, another woman in her 70s was killed when this tree fell on her house. And in Humble, a man in his 50s was killed by a falling tree as well. His wife and children were also in the house but were not hit. Salvation Army is now on its way to help our coastal cities impacted by the storm. Crews are getting ready to head to Wharton, Texas right now. That is about 50 miles south of Houston. Let's get to News 4's Christina DeLeon. She, was, she is live right now with more on their journey. Hi, Christina. Hey, good morning, Diana. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, these trucks are about to take off right now. And you can see these trucks are making their way to Wharton, Texas. Really, it's about 50 miles south of Houston. You can see them as they leave. It is the epicenter of where that hurricane touched down. Now a tropical storm, as you say, and you can see them leaving as we speak, locked and loaded, full of equipment, supplies, food, and lots of other things, uh, cleanups for people who may have lost everything. You can see those trucks leaving, going up 59, the corridor there, and heading out. And joining us live is Brad Mayhar with the Salvation Army. You see them leave. I saw a quick prayer, basically, as those trucks left with your captain. Um, and it's obviously sad to see them leave, but they are taking so much things, mm -hmm. so many things, rather, to the folks who basically lost everything. Right, that's it. And just that's something that we provide when we're on the ground is that prayer and words of encouragement. And uh, and even they're a tight-knit family, our volunteers. You know, they have to lift each other up because they're making sacrifices as they're away from their own families. Yeah, these crews are small, but they are providing yeah. so much, hundreds and hundreds of days of food mm -hmm. for so many people throughout the week. Tell us about some of the supplies and the pastoral care also that they're offering. Yeah, uh, so we'll be providing uh, meals. Uh, we'll be serving several meals a day in the from our canteen truck. Uh, the people that we serve get warm meals. We serve first responders, volunteers, uh, victims, people are, who are there to salvage what they can of their homes. We feed them. Uh, and then we also provide cleanup kits. So in a couple of days, some cleanup kits will arrive uh, so people can be mindful of mold damage to their homes from the heavy rains and we can help them uh, clean those up as safely as possible. You know, and you guys are going to Wharton, Texas with heavy hearts too. This is kind of some of the epicenter of where this hurricane hit mm -hmm. and it did a lot of damage and destruction there. Tell us about that and why you chose this area. Yeah, uh, well, we got orders from our headquarters uh, yesterday. We were monitoring it the last few days of uh, determining where we're going to go. Uh, once we learned the path, uh, Wharton seemed like a great you know, ideal location because Wharton itself will sustain damage and it will be a good gateway to other er surrounding areas too if we need to move around. Yeah, and that is about 50 miles south of Houston, mm -hmm. a town of about 42,000. So again, you're going to see a lot of devastation in that area, mm -hmm. but it really is where they need it most. Uh, that's correct. All right, and again, if you'd like to help out, helpsalvationarmy.org, helpsalvationarmy.org mm -hmm. is really the best place to go. That money goes directly to people who need mm -hmm. it most. Salvation Army does just that. That's right. Um, you make those financial donations, that's the best way to help because we can uh, purchase supplies and food day to day, meet the needs in real time, and we don't have to rely on shipping and you know storage and all of that. We can just support their local economy too while we're there. Absolutely. And finally, something I didn't know you guys offered was pastoral care too. You bring prayer to these folks and these families who need it as well. That's right. Uh, it's part of what the Salvation Army is about. Uh, we have some pastoral staff uh, willing to offer prayer and words of encouragement for anyone who seeks it. Yeah, and something that th these families may never forget basically when they need it at the worst time in their lives right That's now. right. You know, that's something that's going to stick with them for years to come. They're going to remember that someone was there and our job is to provide hope. When they see our red shield, you know, we want that to be to give them hope and comfort when they see us coming. All right, helpsalvationarmy.org, and they are heading over there now. You just saw them take off in real time. It's going to take them a few hours to get there, but that's exactly what they do, and they do it so well. Thank you so much, Brad Mayhar yeah. with the Salvation Army and those crews in route right now to help so many in need right now for the folks affected most by tropical now Tropical Storm Barrel. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio.
some important work that they're doing. Thank you for that live update, Christina. Now let's go to meteorologist Brad Souter. All right. He's been Thank in one so of the much. hardest what areas around the Texas coast and Freeport. Yeah. Brad, I imagine you're starting to get a first look at the damage there. We are, and let me describe the situation. Really, there's damage everywhere. The trees down, power lines, some roof damage. You don't see the, the massive catastrophic damage from a big category five hurricane or tornado, but there's minor damage, but some of that is huge. Let me show you here, Faith, uh, Faith Covenant or Gateway Covenant Church. Some facade damage, uh, very fixable. Some of that probably needed to be fixed anyway, right? It might've been a little older. You can see more facade damage, tree damage, but here's what can't be fixed. The stained glass windows, uh, decades old, uh, the pastor that I was talking to earlier says they don't make them anymore. So that's unfortunate, but what's even more unfortunate is when you lose a window and it's raining 10 inches, you've got water inside the church. And that's exactly what we're seeing with business after business. Even our hotel, we didn't lose a window or a door, but water was blowing in under the cracks and around the windows, so the room is wet. And so anybody that lives here, they've got water. And some folks have a lot more than others. So um, I did talk to the pastor just a few minutes ago. We're gonna take you inside the church coming up and show you what it looks like in there. And the pastor's plea to the community, what he has to say about all of that. I'll have that for you coming up here in about nine minutes. Sounds good. Thank you, Brad. Now let's check in with Amanda Henderson, who spent her morning in Port Lavaca. She's now made her way to Palacios to see the damage left behind there. Amanda. You know, Robert, there has been a lot of damage out here in Palacios, and I'm just going to tell you right now, it's much more than what we saw in Port Lavaca. So a lot of people out here tell me they consider themselves fortunate that it wasn't worse. And what I mean by that is despite the trees being ripped up and the power lines being snapped in half, people tell me their main concern as soon as they could get out of their homes safely was to check on each other. This is a very tight knit community. Even while we were doing an interview with someone a little earlier in the middle of the interview, she actually said, oh, there's my friend that was exactly who I was checking on as soon as I got done with you all. So she was relieved to see her friend was walking over to actually check in on her. So talk about a tight knit community out here. There's also just so much resilience because whenever a storm like this comes through, we always see people coming together to help out each other. Mind you, I just checked the map. There's more than two dozen power outages just here in Palacios right now. Compare that to Port Lavaca, where we came from this morning, when there were fewer than 10 when we left a little earlier this morning. Now, when we talked with a business owner a little bit earlier, they also made mention of the fact that they're just waiting to see what will happen when the power will come back on. But this is Texas in July. We know it's going to get hot. We know it's going to get humid and we can imagine that that's going to be coming soon. So they're hoping that that is sooner rather than later. From Palacios, I'm Amanda Henderson. Back to you. All right, Amanda, thank you. And you heard her talking about power outages. Here is a more in-depth look at just how widespread those outages are. This is a look at the outage map. Right now, 2.6 million customers are without power, mostly in the Houston area. It is an issue that the Houston Fire Chief says could take days before the power is returned. With the anticipated uh, outages, uh, some of those may be long-term. We uh, expect a long cleanup process. We have resources on, on standby now to start clearing some of the debris off the road, but we expect a long uh, cleanup process. A much different story mm -hmm. here in San Antonio. Yeah. Let's to get uh, bring in Jeanette on this. You've been tracking this storm since very early this morning, and we've seen the progression and when it made landfall up the coast. Yeah, it's just a very different picture from San Antonio to Houston. Here we've received maybe an occasional shower here and there throughout the morning, but of course the bulk of this off towards the east. So just recapping, Barrel made landfall in Matagorda at 4 o'clock this morning as a Category 1 hurricane. Upon landfall, maximum sustained winds were at 80 miles an hour, but there were occasional wind gusts nearing 100 miles an hour. Right now, tropical storm, it is weakening. Of course, it's over land, so uh, that's common. It's moving off towards the north and northeast at 13 miles an hour. Wind 
winds now at 65 miles an hour. The center of the storm is just to the northwest of the downtown Houston. I was listening to a press conference uh, in Houston. Officials there are encouraging folks to stay home. They receive hundreds of 911 calls. There's also um, lots of uh, water on area roads and a lot of the street lights are out there. Along the coast, still dealing uh, with some uh, pretty gusty winds, although the heaviest rainfall is lifting off uh, towards the north. Tropical storm warning continues from Lavaca County to East Texas and along the coast. Although the storm is moving away, we're still seeing a wind gusts that are over 40 miles an hour. Heaviest rain north of Houston, west of Livingston, uh, approaching Tyler, Texas, and even over towards western Louisiana. Uh, there is the concern for maybe some isolated tornadoes to continue through this afternoon and evening from far east Texas into western Louisiana. Tornado watch continues there. Some outer rain bands starting to drop some showers across the hill country, specifically around Kerr County and Edwards County. Real quick, check out these wind gusts. 56 miles an hour in Houston, 23 in Bay City, 26 in Gonzales, and 24 miles an hour in New Braunfels. Those gusty winds will gradually subside off uh, towards the east by about 4 to 6 o'clock this evening. We'll take a closer look at our weather here and talk about some higher rain chances uh, for San Antonio later this week. We will continue to bring you live team coverage of Barrel throughout the day. You can also stay up to date with the latest information on our website and our social media pages. And you can download our free News 4 app. Just search WOAI in your app store.